Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Emily and welcome back to my channel where I review, critique, and summarize scary children's books. How's it going everybody? I'm uh, here to do another book talk. I'm sure that you can see uh, my new special guest there in the background. That's Slappy. <laughs> Today in this video I am going to be doing a book talk on a novel called The Screaming Staircase. It's by Jonathan Stroud. It's a middle grade horror novel and it came out like in 2013. I fully acknowledge that I am so late to these books. I even started The Screaming Staircase like a year ago and then never finished it. So here I am finally finished it to talk about it. This novel is the first in his Lockwood and Company series. This is a middle grade horror series that has gone on for a number of books. I'm actually not sure how many. I will Google it. Google tells me there's five books, so I'm gonna go with that. And a uh, 1.5. Not sure exactly what that means. So there's five books in the series. The Screaming Staircase is the first. And yeah, for a person that loves kids horror as much as I do, this book was a really bad mark on my record, the fact that I had never read it. But finally I have and it was wonderful and I can't wait to talk about it. So in this video, as always, I'm going to summarize the book for you, uh, followed by a very quick book talk. And finally, I am going to give you my numerical scores for this book. So I always score books by scares, writing and language, story, and my personal score. So make sure to hang around until the end of the video if you want to see those. And the reason that I don't have the physical book with me is I actually read the ebook. So I think this is a first on my channel. Not 100% sure, but. All right, so The Screaming Staircase takes place in London, England, where something called The Problem has started running rampant. And The Problem is that all manner of ghosts, poltergeists, and general spirits have risen up from the dead and are terrorizing London. All of these spirits endanger the living. So in order to deal with The Problem, various agencies of people who go in and fight and eradicate these ghosts have popped up all over London. But the thing is that only children possess the psychic abilities to actually see and otherwise interact with ghosts. As people get older, their sort of senses start to dull and kids are really the only ones that they can put on the front lines when it comes to this problem. So all of these agencies that pop up are staffed by children and teens. One of these teens is our main character, Lucy Carlyle, a 15 year old girl Girl who has just joined a very small ghost hunting agency in London called Lockwood and Company. The owner of this company is a mysterious and charming teen named Anthony Lockwood and together with his sarcastic deputy George Cubbins he is taking on the world of ghost hunting for profit. In this book, Lucy, Lockwood, and George take on a particularly nasty ghost case in the fabled Concarry Hall, one of the most haunted houses in England. And of course, this house contains the titular screaming staircase. All right, guys, so there is so much good to be said about this book. This is one of those books that I picked up and thought, wow, is, this book is so tailored to me. This has all of my interests and it kind of represents everything that I love about kids horror. So many of the good things that come out of this particular genre are here. So the first thing is that this book is incredibly tightly written and plotted. Jonathan Stroud is obviously a very experienced writer. Everything, every word, every sentence in this book serves a purpose. And then zooming out a bit, the way that this book is plotted totally reflects the way that it's written. This is one of the most tightly plotted middle grade horror novels I've read in a really long time. It's so well structured. It makes such great use of the tension between hope and despair and the predictable and the unexpected. I really enjoyed the characters in this novel. Our main character, Lucy, is very interesting and she's a great point of view from which to see this world. Something about Lucy is that she does have an interesting sort of psychic talent in that she hears ghosts rather than sees them very clearly. So there is something that sets her apart but you still get the sense that she has a lot to learn. She's a really dynamic character with lots of opportunity for growth and change over the course of the novel and the series as well but I haven't read any of the other ones yet so that remains to be seen but I'm sure her character growth is excellent. I'm definitely going to go on to the other ones by the way. Lockwood and George are also really fun characters. At first they seem a bit stereotypical and a bit predictable but as the book goes on they become more well-rounded and pretty dynamic just like Lucy. I love the gothicism in this book 
book and how well Jonathan Stroud puts it in conversation with this modern setting. There is so much fun to be had with the ghostly and creepy atmosphere in this book and there are some genuinely chilling moments. But something that Jonathan Stroud does very well is he puts the kids at the center of the novel in a power position over these ghosts. Because after all, these kids are not in this situation simply to be scared by ghosts. They are also there to fight them. So they go into creepy situations prepared with knowledge and tools that will help them fight these ghosts. And that does mediate the scares a little bit. But when it counts, Stroud is able to really play with this power position to really deliver the scares when the book needs to be scary, aka like the climax of the novel. It's a really smart way to combine horror and adventure, which in most cases, not all, but most is really needed in horror books written for this age. You need to have that adventure aspect because if you go too far into the ideas of powerlessness and hopelessness, then it stops being fun for kids. In adult horror, Bob's your uncle. Powerlessness and hopelessness all the way. They're totally game. But when it comes to writing in the confines um, of a young audience, injecting your story with aspects of adventure helps to mediate that idea of like total loss of hope. So Stroud's use of horror with adventure is really fantastic in this novel. All right, so with all of this in mind, I am going to give The Screaming Staircase a 9 out of 10 for writing and language and a 9 out of 10 for story. This is such a well-crafted novel, so those high scores are pretty well deserved in my opinion. Considering this book is targeted to kids ages 8 to 12, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for scares. This is a scary book for kids who like scary books. I wouldn't recommend giving this book to a kid that doesn't already love horror or horror themes. There are corpses, there is murder, there are some really genuinely chilling ghost scenes and a lot of scary situations. Again, this is all presented to us through a lens that is very palatable and accessible for kids, but there is no denying that this is a scary book. And finally, I'm going to give The Screaming Staircase a personal score of 9 out of 10. Like I say, I am absolutely going to continue with the series. I'm already halfway through the second one. I can tell that I'm just going to devour this whole thing. So see you guys in that video. <laughs> All right, so that is it for my review today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've read this book or if you would be interested in this book. I love the themes of ghost hunting. I think they're a lot of fun for people who even enjoy like ghost hunting TV shows. It's a really interesting world in terms of the media that we produce for ourselves about ghosts. So yeah, this is just another uh, really great addition into that whole thing. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like as well. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing I will be here doing scary kids book reviews and videos like this for the foreseeable future. And if you want to follow me on various social media, the links are in the description below as always. All right guys, well thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week. Happy reading! I hope everybody's having a good January so far and I'll talk to you very soon. Okay.